Welcome to Majesty Christian Television. And uh, I would like to use this opportunity to wish all our mothers a very happy Mother's Day. Thank God for your life and thank God for you laying down your lives for us to live. It's so awesome, you know, to reflect on today and all that it means. Honestly, it's a great idea and it's a good tradition which the whole world has, uh, a day on which mothers are honored for their selfless devotional education to mankind, and especially to their households and families. And so one more time, I'd like to congratulate all women on this Mother's Day of 2012. Shall we pray before we go any further? Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this hour. I thank you for this wonderful day, a day of remembrance, a day of appreciation for, for mothers. Thank you for, for the women folk and for who you have made them to be and for the blessing you have placed in their lives for the benefit of all mankind. To you be the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Once again, welcome to this broadcast. Um, I'm going to just, my, I'm, I'm here basically to, to extend uh, felicitations to our women and to compliment them. And I'd like to start first of all with my own wife, uh, the, the veteran, the, 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 the hardworking industrials, and extremely blessed and anointed woman of God, my dear wife, Apostle Helen, whom I call Ify, uh, she has been a fantastic lady ever since she came into my life. She has been uh, a revolutionary, I would say. And I thank God for her impact in our family, uh, our household, our, our children, our loved ones. She has been a great, great blessing, and we appreciate her very much. Um, my recollections of the impact she has had even upon those who we have raised in the ministry, those who have passed through our hands, awesome. When I sit back and I, I listen to her in a discussion, in a dialogue, in counseling with the young ladies, it's awesome. Teaching them everything from cleanliness to how to comport themselves in dealing with the opposite sex uh, and how to deal with re their relationship problems and things like that. It's been awesome. I have watched this over the years and I cannot but help, I cannot help but to compliment the great motherly virtue in her. And so on this day, I would like to truly honor her, her work, and her position in our lives. Today, I just want to, uh, as it were, share my thoughts a little bit. Uh, I'm not really going to preach, but just to share my thoughts and my, my compliments for mothers. I want to look back. I might get some, take some reflections from my own uh, upbringing, my own, you know, my own time growing up as a young person, as a child, uh, and use the opportunity to appreciate the role of a mother in my life. I want to especially pay a little attention to, to some of the faces, uh, crucial faces in the life of, of a mom. Crucial faces in the life of a mom. And uh, this is something we ought not to gloss over. It's a pity that most people or some people at some point forget the price the mothers have paid for them. And it is a very dangerous thing to forget the mother who raised you up, the mother who birthed you and went through all kinds of inconveniences that you might become somebody. One regret I have so very much today is that the woman who gave birth to me is no more. She, she went to be with the Lord and I wish I could bring her back to give her the honor she truly deserves. It's a pity I didn't have the power to to withhold, to push back death from from you know from taking her. 
to be with the Lord. That notwithstanding, I truly honor her memory. She was a great, great, great woman. Very influential, very powerful, well respected, and, and, and a woman filled with love. In fact, I see in her an ideal woman. A woman strong, strong in spirit, fervent in prayer. A woman loving, generous, and kind. And one who extends her, her, her um, generosity beyond the children she bore by herself. I recall how many young ladies were raised in our home. Some of them children of my aunties and my uncles, all of them growing up with us and under the expense of my mother. Sent them to school, paid their fees, treated them just like us. Honestly, we grew up not knowing not really differentiating between who was who. Because we saw them like their own. Although we knew they were our cousins, but we all grew up just like one family. I truly respect such a woman for all she has done. The investment she has made in the life of so many. The Lord bless her memory. Let me just read from uh, the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 1. Uh Luke chapter 1, the verse 20, from 26, the Bible says, In the sixth month, God sent an angel to Gabriel, and the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at those words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. So the angels, the angel's appearance in the home of Mary, plus the words he used to address her were really unorthodox or not customary. And so Mary was wondering what sort of greeting this might be. It says, greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. If it were me, or you, you might wonder, what is this? A man who appears in front of your home or inside your home. I'm sure, I'm sure the angel didn't just appear in her room. The angel must have maybe uh, uh, appeared at the doorstep and knocked on the door and come in. Come in I suppose, you know. Because if, if uh, somebody just appears out of thin air, in your room, you will be scared. You will run for your life or you will faint or something like that. It's very possible that the angel appeared like a human being, uh, came on, on the doorstep, knocked and then entered and was admitted in and, and, and greeted the way we see. Now, the Bible says Mary was greatly troubled at this words because they were not the normal kind of greeting. Uh, um, but then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. In other words, you are going to become a mother. This is the dream of every young lady, or most young ladies, I would say. Perhaps 99% uh, of women uh, have a desire to become fulfilled as mothers. Uh, one of the amazing things I see, I find about women is, is the way God has made them. To be able to carry life in their own body and reproduce that life. It's something that baffles me and beats my imagination. How God can shape a woman as a vessel of reproduction is so glorious. You know, when I was a child, I used to wonder how uh, babies were born. And, uh, and then, I, I, so one day I was asking my mother about one of my cousins who was she, who she was raising, um, she was like a big sister to us. And uh, so I asked how, uh, how babies are born. And she said the babies are put in the stomach. So in my little mind, I began to imagine, how could a big lady like her be in the, in the stomach of my mother? I, w I couldn't figure it out as a child, you know? Okay, but that was just, that was by the way. Um, 
So a woman is shaped to carry or to produce children, which is an awesome, awesome, awesome responsibility and privilege. And the Bible says the angel brought to Mary the message that she was going to bear a child and going to have a son and was going to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of his father David, over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will never end. What a great promise, a great prophecy over the child Mary was going to bear. And then Mary asks, how will this be since I'm a virgin? Mary said, well, I'm not a married, so how, how is this going to be? Because I know that I can only have a child when I am married. Now, this brings to me, me to a very crucial point. One of the crucial phases in the life of moms. You see, there are times when they experience the unexpected in their lives. Uh, women are so amazing. I have... I'm learning to have respect for women more and more and more. The ability to deal with issues and difficulties and sometimes unexpected things in their lives is awesome. My prayer this day that is that every woman will have their dreams and their desires fulfilled. Because some of them go through a lot. Some of them sacrifice a lot. Some of them have to deal with so much in life. Here was a young lady who was engaged, was going to be married, had not yet been married, uh, suddenly, out of the blue, a message comes from heaven. That you are going to become a mother, and you're going to have a child, he's going to be so and so and so and so and so. And so she was perplexed by the message because she didn't expect her life to go the way the angel was announcing. Now, so she asked the angel the question, how will this be since... I have no husband. And then the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Hallelujah. Now, here was Mary about to have her life, her whole life changed. Not according to the way she expected or perhaps had planned to go as a young woman. How many women have had their lives disrupted by some sudden event, some unplanned event, some issues they never had thought was going to happen in their lives? And yet, patiently and, 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 and painstakingly, uh, they had to endure these things because of something that God was going to do through their lives. Perhaps you listening to me or watching me as a mother, you had your child uh, without the father of that child being there or even accepting the responsibility. You know, sometimes men, when they are growing up and they are wild and they are, they are trying to discover themselves, you know, they go about, you know, messing, ar messing around, you know. Sometimes in the process, they, they, you know, they, 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 you know, they put women or young girls in the family way. A and then their eyes open and then they can begin to realize, hey, what have I done? And then they begin to run from what they have done. Some young men don't have the courage even to admit what they have done. But if you look at the girls, they appear more stable, more composed. Sometimes the grief of maybe a young man denying what he had done to them may break their heart. But most of the time, they have the courage and the strength to say, I am going to make sure that I give the child a good future, no matter what happens. I respect that courage. I respect, I respect that boldness. I respect that confidence which women have shown over the years. Hallelujah. Such women deserve our salute. They deserve our compliments. I have great respect for such women. May the Lord bless you. If you have been through that situation and yet you carried the challenge and the responsibility all by yourself, perhaps with the, with the help of a few friends or maybe your mother, uh, uh, you know, I know some girls who became, who become pregnant and uh, they become the butt of jokes by everybody. Even the father 
of the girl may become mad and say, hey, if you can do this, I'm kicking you out of my home. You have to go and find whoever is the father of the child and, 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 and let him take care of you. And some of the ladies, you know, in order to protect the boys, they keep their mouth shut. In order not to create a big scandal, they keep a lot in their heart, endure a lot of things. For this child to be in their body for nine full months, no matter the pressure which comes upon them, they keep the secret because they are trying to protect somebody. And sometimes because of the child that is in their body, they will keep silence. And for the whole period until the child is born, can you imagine what it takes? Can you imagine what it takes? I know some women have been through things like this. Not for their own sake, but for the sake of even the unborn child. They will endure anything. I compliment you, woman. I compliment you, mother. I compliment you, sister. If you have been through things like this, you are great. You have courage. You have strength, which most people don't have. Most men dare not and cannot even have. The Lord bless you. The Lord compensate you for all the troubles you've been through. The Lord wipe away your tears. May that child you brought into the world under all kinds of difficulties, may that child never disappoint you. May that child remember what you have gone, what you've been through in order to give him or her life. May that child never turn his or her back to you in Jesus' name. Now, Mary, after she got this message, it wasn't long after that she became pregnant. And the strange thing was this. She became pregnant without being married. She became pregnant, and Joseph find, found out that Mary was not pregnant. Meanwhile, the two of them had not come together. They had not been formally married, and so it became a big issue. How is this possible? And so Joseph decided to drop Mary. How many women have been rejected by their so-called spouses or boyfriends because they had a feeling that uh, somebody else was a party to the pregnancy or somebody insta was a party and therefore a controversy broke out and they just walked away. And so Joseph, realizing the situation, said, no, I'm going to, I can't be a party to this. I want to check out of this marriage. I'm breaking the engagement with immediate effect because I, I, I don't see why you can go to another man and her pregnancy? No way. But the woman tried to explain what was going on, but it sounded like a, a fa fairy tales in the ears of Joseph. Jo Mary said to Joseph that an angel came to me and told me so and so and so and so. Joseph must have looked at her and said, you must be crazy. An angel from where? In this day and age, you see, you see an angel? How can you prove to me that it's an angel? I can imagine a discussion like that where it was difficult to reconcile and to bring, I mean, to, to, to come to the same point because there was a factor in the whole thing which was beyond human ability, which was beyond human comprehension, something divine, something spiritual. Most times, women like you who have had to go through difficulties, who've got to go through sometimes embarrassments to have children, God has a mighty way of compensating you. Hallelujah. God has a powerful way of compensating you in Jesus' name. I have a, a sister. Let, let me put this. I know, uh, okay. I have a sister, and I remember uh, years back, you know, she was then, I think she was in school, or she had just finished school, and then she was in love with, uh, I think she fell in love with a young man who was probably her classmate or schoolmate or something like that. And uh, fortunately, out of that came a pregnancy. Uh, well, she eventually had a child safely. Uh, but I don't know what really happened because I was small. Um, but they didn't get married at the time. Uh, I don't know why they didn't get married. Uh, for whatever reason, so they couldn't marry. So she had to, you know, raise up the child by herself. Uh, eventually, of course, she got married to somebody else and everything else went on fine. But, uh... I saw, in a, a little way, the difficulty and the issue of raising 
uh, a child in the, as a single parent, so to speak, so to speak, or raising a child when the biological father is not present. I saw a little bit of that in her life at the time, you know, and it's not easy. But I, I, I later on, I saw some of the, you know, her own personal struggles in order to find her feet and to become her own person. You know, she also had a bit of independency in her thinking, you know. Um, but to cut a long story short, I saw how, by the grace of God, and through her persistence also to find her feet in life, God made a way, an awesome way, in the, in the sense that God did something with that boy from nothing. And I remember when that boy was growing up, I saw how many times his schooling was disrupted because the mother wanted to find her feet. So she traveled from one town to the other just to find her feet and to do something for herself. And one of the concerns I had at the time when I was, I was, I was becoming of age was how this boy's education was being disrupted every now and then because the mother would move from one, one city or one town, one, one country to another in order to find her feet. And so that was one of my greatest concerns. But as the Lord would have it, this boy somehow, by the mercy of God, found his feet. To cut a long story short, he ended up, you know, opening up a business and he has, you know, a chain of businesses. And I can tell you, he has access to some very influential people in his country, even including uh, the president from, of the country. Uh, he's in. He, he's he's in now. He, he, you know, the country is is grown is grown up in. He has access to people in high places, including the president of his nation. And this is a boy who, you know, could not finish his school. The last time I saw this boy, he came visiting uh, in this country. He was lodging in one of the five star hotels, all paid for. And he was working for, uh, as, a, as a, what do you call it? Uh, he was working in this oil business with, with some of these guys. And he was, I mean, he was, his, he was doing very well. And it was a joy to see how God, in his grace and mercy, will compensate such a woman, my sister that is, with all that she went through, to ensure that she gave the best she could afford to her children. The last time I saw my sister and her family, I saw, I went to visit and saw where, what God had done for them. You know, the young, this young man had been able to build a house. I mean, he's built more than that by now. He's now married, married to uh, uh, a university graduate who is an, an American by nationality. And so you, you wonder how God takes care of those who have not. And sometimes those who, who go through things like this. In fact, if you are a mother, especially you have become a single mother due to circumstances beyond your control, I want to tell you, the Lord will comfort you. The Lord will comfort you. You may have gone through some embarrassment, some shame. You may have experienced some unexpected t twists and turns in your life. But listen to me. God will compensate you for all the troubles you've been through. Hallelujah. Now, back to my text. Mary, whose life and the plan for her life was going to be interrupted by what God had intended. God said, you are going to have a child, and this child will be born by the Holy Spirit, not by a man's will. As a result, Mary, of course, endured a lot of, uh, you know, ridicule because she became pregnant and there was no father for the child, a physical father, that is. And, and, and she had to endure gossip and all kinds of things. But the promise of God was that that child was going to be great. Perhaps you are a mother who can relate to this story. I want to encourage you today. May your mother's day be blessed. May it be fulfilling. May the child you gave birth to become a hero and a blessing to our generation in Jesus' name. May the sorrows and the things that you have endured, the embarrassment, the shame, 
you know, the rejection you may have endured. May God Almighty turn it around and comfort you with every comfort that you need in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You being a mother alone is a blessing. Remember, children are a gift from God. Whether you have your father with you or not, remember that God gave you that gift of that child. He has a plan for that child. He knows and he has a purpose for that child. He will bring it to accomplishment. Hallelujah. Therefore, mother, don't give up. Write on. Give the best you can. I know and I want to assure you that the Lord God Almighty will comfort you greatly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to give my compliments one more time to all mothers. I appreciate all that you have done for your children. You know, carrying the pregnancy and nurturing these little babies until they, they you know, they grew up and became uh, who they are or, or they are on their way to being who they are going to become. The Lord bless you. Sometimes you enjoy a lot. Sometimes the children become difficult and stubborn and they make you cry and shed tears. Listen, don't worry. Pray for those kids. Pray for those children. For the Lord your God will comfort you greatly in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to, I want to comfort you. And I want to compliment you. I want you to know you've done a great thing by bringing a man or woman into the world. By bringing a child into the world. You are, you are not a disgrace. Some people may say, oh yeah, you had a child out of pregnancy. You are not a disgrace. You have done a great thing. Hallelujah. People may not like how it came about, but look at Mary. She didn't have a child. Jesus was not conceived when Joseph was in her life. But look at what God did out of the life of Jesus. I want to tell you, that child you have is a gift from God. Therefore, do not look at it. Do not listen to what people try to tell you or when they gossip about you. They gossip about Mary. They said all kinds of things about her. But do not worry. The Lord's hand is upon you. The Lord will sustain you. The Lord will encourage you. The Lord will wipe away your tears. In a few years to come, you will see the hand of Jehovah God. I'll share with you what I saw even in my own family, in my own, from my own background. God will do the same for you and even greater. Receive it. And I want to compliment you on this Mother's Day. Be blessed and be blessed richly. May your heart be filled with joy with assurance that your labor of love will never be in vain. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God bless you richly. And once again, have a very blessed, happy Mother's Day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.